Hi, I'm Sebin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled An Intuitive Explanation of Zero Voltage Switching, Zero Current Switching, and Theodo Zero Voltage Switching. So in this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate what is hard switching, what is true and pseudo zero voltage switching, to explain why a fast turn off and slow turn on are recommended, show zero voltage switching in resonant converters, talk a little bit about switching in flyback, and all these will be demonstrated by LTSPI simulation. So let me start with sort of the ground rules here. This is a half bridge which actually represents the most if not all PWM converters. You can sort of, this is a generic case. And what is important to realize is that we can have two situations that the current is coming out or current is coming in. This would be like a boost converter. And if the current is coming out, then the current can pass through a transistor, through the low side transistor, through the low side diode, and not through this diode, of course. If the current is coming in, then it will go, can go through this uh, two transistors and this upper diode. This is a special case, of course, It'll be like a buck with a diode, and in this case, of course, we have only the diode that can pass the current. Okay, so these are just the basics of the directions of the current. So let me start with something very simple, and this is a true zero voltage switching. Now suppose a current is coming out, the transistor is conducting, and then you turn it off. When you turn it off, the current will now pass through the diode. The voltage on the transistor was zero. Now when the diode is conducting, it's say one volt, the transistor current is going down. So we have a low voltage. Well, we call it zero and the current is going down. So the overlap between current and voltage is really small and the losses will be small. So this is really a through zero voltage switch. Now let's have a look at the hard switching. This is actually the worst case that we can have. What I'm showing here is the case that the current is passing through the diode. This is during the dead time. And now we are turning on this transistor. Now a diode, when conducting, will conduct both ways until the charge carriers in the junction will sort of move out or dissipate or be diffused out. So as we turn on this transistor, there is a current here, and you might say that there is a short. By the way, in this case, I am putting these inductors to be zero. We'll see what is the effect of this uh, stray or parasitic inductance la later on. So as I turn on this transistor, and I'm using, say, one ohm gate resistor, it's pretty fast. So I see here the gate, this is just a zoom on the gate, and you see that we are building up now a very high current. Well, it's actually it's here, uh, 480 amp. Well, it's not realistic, as I said, there are some inductances, but you can see that this is really a bad situation. Let's have a look now at the case of turn off. So now the current already moved from the diode to the inductor, in fact, this is representing the inductor. And now I'm about to turn it off. And I'm starting with a slow turn off, 20 ohm. This is VGS. This is the voltage of the gate. And I see the, the voltage of the drain, drain to source going up, and the current, of course, going down. And there is an overlap, overlap here. And now I've changed it to one ohm, and one ohm makes the turn off very quickly. That is, the current goes down very quickly. The drain goes up rather slowly because there are some capacitances here that need to be charged or discharged. And therefore, in the case of the turn off, you like to do it very quickly 
to minimize the overlap between the current and the voltage. And here is again a comparison. We have a fast turn off, we have a slow turn off. This is the slow turn off, see quite a bit of uh, overlap. And here it's a fast turn off. And of course, if you look now at the energy involved, you see that for the slow turn off, you have a lot of losses. This is the product of voltage and current. Here, we see oscillation. This is the product. And the, actually, the average is very low, although this oscillation also caused some losses because of the circulating current. But clearly, during turn off, you like to have a fast turn off that is a small resistance. And now I'm returning again to through zero voltage switching, a turn on this time. After this transistor turned off, the inductor current is now passing through the diode because there was a self commutation here, charging, discharging the capacitor and the voltage dropped and the diode started to conduct. To reduce losses, I like to turn on this transistor. Again, we have a low voltage here. I'm turning on the transistor, and of course the product will be small because the voltage is involved is like one volt, and we call it through zero voltage switching. So let me now go back for a minute to this situation of turn off of this upper transistor. We like to have a fast turn off, having a small resistance here. And as we have said, we are sort of minimizing the overlap by turning the current very quickly off. And this is not zero voltage switching, but I call it pseudo zero voltage switching because I'm getting sort of a minimal overlap between these two because of the very fast turn off of this uh, current. So this will be a pseudo zero voltage switching which is achieved by a fast turn off. So now let's see what's the moral of what we've seen. We have seen the following, that you have half switching if you have a transistor which is turned on against a conducting diode. This is hard switching, this is the worst case. You have soft switching if the diode is conducting and you turn on the transistor on the voltage of the diode. So if we can change the situation such that when we want to turn on this transistor, we will momentarily change the direction of the current, then we can turn on the transistor under zero voltage switching. So this is something that we can do. We can reverse the current at the crucial moment when we want to do the switching, and by that we'll get a true zero voltage switching rather than the hard switching. So let's see how we can achieve this in this so-called borderline current mode case, okay? Here we have a transistor which is conducting. If we would have turned it off, the diode would be conducting, and then if we'll turn this one on, the upper transistor, the high side will have hard switching. If, however, I manage to change the direction of this current at this moment, such that the current will be in this case, then there'll be a self-commutation, the diode will be conducting, and the transistor will be turned on at through zero voltage switching. This can be achieved by the borderline current mode operation. In the CCM, continuous current mode, we have current all the time, so the current is always going out in a buck converter. However, in the BCM, we allow the ripple to be high enough, so we have a reverse current, okay? So now if I have a reverse current here, and I turn the transistor off, there will be a self-commutation and the current, this current, will go up and the diode will conduct and then I can turn it, this high side transistor, at zero voltage switching 
rather than hard switching as originally would be the case with the CCM. So this is something we can do. We have a similar situation in a resonant converter and I'm showing it now on an LLC. This is a generic or average model or first harmonic representation of an LLC. These are the two inductors, here's the capacitor, this represents the excitation and I'm starting with an AC analysis to see the resonant point. This is a, it's called RAC, reflecting the load side, loading the LLC, the resonant tank. So running an AC analysis, I see for a given resistance, I see here a resonant point. There are frequencies above resonant, there are frequencies below resonant. Now notice that the phase of the current, this is the current of the inductor, this is this current, which is also the current of the source, this is this current. I'm sorry, it's not labeled correctly. And so here we have a lagging current and here we have a leading current and as we will see in a minute, if we walk here, this lagging current is actually causing zero voltage switching while this leading current is causing hard switching or you might say zero current switching. So again, I'm now running side by side the two LLC unit. One is running at a frequency above resonant, so this would be zero voltage switching, and one below resonant. So here it is. This is about above resonant. So what we see here is that during this time the current is negative, while here during the switching time the current is positive. And here I'm sort of emphasizing it by these sketches here. This is the case of frequency above resonance. During the switching of this transistor, the current which was going this way is already going the other way and therefore the diode will be conducting and I am turning it on zero voltage switching. On the other hand, at frequency below resonance, the current is still passing through the diode so when I turn on this transistor I am walking against a conducting diode. So what about flyback? Now in flyback the situation is a bit different. We have this coupled inductor, we have leakage and here is the transistor. Now when I turn this transistor on, okay, I have the inductance which has no current in it, so the current starts to build up slowly due to the inductance which is here, so the current is going up here, which is fine. So this is actually sort of pseudo zero current switching, well it's not zero current switching, but the current is zero at the beginning and it starts to go up because you have a voltage and then there is inductance, so the IDT is V over L and the current goes fairly slowly. However, there is another issue here and that is hard switching due to the output capacitance, COSS. As you turn on the transistor, the voltage here is high. You dump the energy of this capacitor into the transistor and this is losses which are proportional to the frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the losses. So this is a significant loss, especially if the voltage will be high. Okay? So what you'll see is that the internally you see a very high current here because you are shorting this capacitor. This current goes up rather slowly, but here the, here the energy is actually dumped into the transistor. Now the energy involved is V square times the so-called energy related capacitor. Now this capacitance is non-linear. You just can just point to one particular value on the curve and see this is uh, the capacitance. You have so, to do some 
you know, some math here in order to find the so-called energy-related capacitance, which is now given actually in data sheets. Now you can improve it, but the so-called zero voltage switching, it's called the valley zero voltage switching, and the idea is that voltage of the drain after turn off is not straight, but it's oscillating due to the capacitance reflected to the primary. So you see a voltage which is oscillating at the drain. Now if you have a controller that that can synchronize to this valley point, the voltage here is lower and the energy loss is lower. So this is a technique that is really used today, but obviously you need a controller that can synchronize to this point and then turn on the transistor at this point, and this will actually cause a shift in frequency, that is the frequency will not be constant because you have some uncertainty where the actual value is. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.